Good afternoon. Mr. Subramaniam, Reverend Father Jagat Gaspar Raj, my fellow panelists. Generally, I'm better reading material given to me. <laughs> Whether as a news reader, as a or a script reader of documentaries, or even as an actor, I read something that somebody else has written. Hopefully well. I have followed the same principle. I have written very briefly what I want to say so that I don't beat around the mulberry bush. I am not equipped with the kind of oratorical skills that have been exhibited by my predecessors. We're all ultimately saying the same thing about excellence. We've heard different approaches. My approach is through DNA. And that's how I have examined this subject on a personal basis. And I hope uh, I could share some of these thoughts with you. Deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, is quite simply an amazing phenomenon. The fact it makes a child resemble its parent, determine its height, color, hair color, bone structure, or endow it with the complexion and characteristics of either parent, is in itself bewildering. But when it goes further to predicate the artistic potential or scientific temper of progeny, it is nothing short of miraculous. What makes it strange is that more often than not, it skips a generation. And weirder still, when we come across someone with a talent so rare that none among his or her ancestors in the recorded past has exhibited it. Examples are at plenty if you look around, but it is not my purpose to pepper you with illustrations. I'm sure you have discovered them yourselves and know what I'm talking about. So where is all this leading? What has any of this to do with individual excellence? What indeed is the connection between DNA and excellence? I believe that it's specifically your DNA that differentiates you from others. What drives you forward? What motivates you to express yourself? In short, what makes you the individual you are? If you are to rise above the marsh gas of mediocrity and soar into the ozone of opportunity, you must seek to recognize and submit to that flashpoint in your DNA which motivates you to establish your indelible imprint as a person. Like Robert Browning's scholar gypsy who wandered around waiting for the spark from heaven to fall, we must always be alive to that genius within us, hidden in our DNA, that renders us instantly unique. Remember, the word genius comes from the word gene. We must find the passion. And passion, ladies and gentlemen, is the operative word in my thought process. We must find the passion that leads us to discover ourselves and be what we can and should be, rather than what we routinely turn out to be. Excellence, in my opinion, is a perceived quality. It is what others see in you. If you remain satisfied being merely what your parents determine for you, or what your peers are, you deny yourself the opportunity of igniting the fire within you that perhaps burns for a different cause. Awaken your passion. Unlock the doors that resist change. You will surely reach levels of achievement that not only fulfill you, but are acknowledged by the world as signals of excellence. The misfortune of most is unthinking uniformity. Chartered accountants force their children to study commerce. Engineers want theirs to repair pumps. And doctors would like to see their offspring born with a stethoscope for an umbilical cord. What happens is that we create a world of clones, an army of averagers who stumble through life like automatons, ending up as dried leaves within the pages of a diary to be forgotten forever. Another tragedy frequently encountered is that everyone wants to be someone else. Most fail. Actors try to become directors, singers become composers, and vice versa. Clones never replace originals. 
impersonators are at best ephemeral entertainers of dubious artistic merit. Excellence is achieved when you do something that is you and you alone. When you give expression to that innate talent that gushes forth naturally like a geezer engulfing all. So how does one recognize this inner urge? It calls for perception and courage. Not always is it possible to discover it, but it is there. Kabir Das, the great mystic poet, has said it beautifully, and believe me, he could not have defined DNA more succinctly. And I say it in Hindi, or the Khadi Boli that is written it. Tera sai tujh mein, jyon pahupan mein baas, kasturi ka mirag jyon pag pag dhoondhe ghaas. Translated freely, it says, your excellence or uniqueness lies within you as the fragrance lies in the flower. However, you wander around like the musk deer, hunting for the heady perfume of musk in the grass without realizing that it is within itself, in its own, as they say, nabhi. The only way to release this urge is to give free rein to your passion. Trust yourself to follow it. Hitch your wagon to the star, said Ralph Wardo Emerson. You will make your mark, carve your own niche. You will also become a change agent. And this is one example I will give you. There was a time about 15 years ago when students in schools and colleges looked down upon their peers who were learning Carnatic music. Pavams was what they were referred to. In inter-school and college culturals, they were jeered at. Then it happened. I was one of the judges at an inter-school competition for Carnatic music. One boy in the uniform of a reputed school in Chennai sat on stage and sang a Tyagaraja Kriti. The hall went hushed. This young boy transformed everything after that. Nothing was the same. He went on to establish YACM, Youth Association for Carnatic Music, and the rest is history. The name of that lad, now a major Vidwan, is Vijay Shiva. Imagine what would have happened had 10-year-old Yu Srinivas not picked up an unattended mandolin at a music re-recording tea break and started strumming on it. Or had C. V. Raman, Sir C. V. Raman, disregarded the question of a child who asked him, why is the sea blue? And when responded with, because the sky is blue, went on to ask, why is the sky blue? Sir C. V. Raman has gone on record to say that it was that question in the pure logic of an innocent child that perhaps led to the discovery of the Raman effect and the Nobel Prize. Yes, it is the persistent internal inquiry and the courage to experiment that frees one's passion and leads to excellence. Sometimes you need a mentor who recognizes the fire in you and fuels it. At the cost of self-indulgence, allow me to give you my own example. My entire schooling was at a Jesuit institution in Calcutta. Most of my teachers were priests from Europe and Ireland. Pretty early in school, I found that I was being singled out by one Belgian priest to read out student speeches of welcome and thanksgiving at virtually all school functions. In fact, the speeches were even written by the priest who would then make me rehearse them over and over again. I recall being more than mildly annoyed at this because I would much rather have sat with my friends in the auditorium than being alone on stage. I know today that what that marvelously intuitive Belgian priest did for me in school in the role of a self-appointed mentor is what my profession is today. Voice work. At a time when I had no inkling of it myself, he recognized in me the passion for the spoken word. And although I went through a corporate career spanning 27 years, it's the spoken word that is my life breath today and for which I am known. But for him, I might have routinely retired from corporate life after what would in all probability have been a decent but undistinguished, unfulfilling career. Talking of mentors, would the great Srinivasa Ramanujam's path-breaking work have been open to the world had not Professor Hardy chanced upon his mathematical equations? 
It is up for grabs whether the genius of R.K. Narayan and his wonderful Malgudi stories would have received international acclaim but for the commendation of Somerset Mom. To conclude, excellence lies in your giving expression to that quality or talent within you that defines you and you alone. Some find it on their own. Some are lucky to have mentors who discover the spark and fan the flame, so to speak. Most of us, however, are content to run with the hare and hunt with the hound, getting swallowed up in the morass of mediocrity. So it's really your call. Do you have the courage, the spirit, the motivation to unleash the fire within you? If you do, the DNA is there. Excellence waits for you around the corner. Thank you. I think that was really fantastic. Um, I could well see that what a prepared presentation it was. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. PZ. You know, I think the, the need to discern, listen to the inner voice, and pick up the courage, and give passion to whatever you discern, I think is wonderful. And that's a challenge also for us today because that's also a call to liberate ourselves individually and collectively from the bane of mediocrity.